energy tends to disperse from where it is concentrated to where it's dilute. Consider a campfire. There within the burning embers, energy is concentrated. Notice what it does. That energy spreads outward, and in doing so, warms both you and the surroundings. It spreads outward by a number of different means. There's radiation that includes the visible light of the campfire, as well as infrared, which you feel as heat. Air warmed by the fire also leaves the fire by convection. That includes the smoke, which we see rising into the air, again, away from where the energy is concentrated, within the embers, to where it's dilute, to the colder sky above. No matter how you look at it, that concentrated energy within the fire is doing all it can to spread outward. This is just so obvious, we tend to take it for granted. Yet, if you look carefully, you'll see that spreading outward is all energy ever does. The energy may be stored temporarily within, say, the wood of a tree, but eventually that energy will be released, if not within a burning campfire, then as the wood slowly decomposes on the forest floor. But wait a second, where did the wood get its energy from? The answer is from a huge concentration of energy we call the sun. Sunlight radiating away from the sun reaches the green leaves of the tree here on earth. And within those leaves, through a process called photosynthesis, the sun's energy is stored in the form of carbohydrates, which the tree uses to make the wood. Okay, where does the sun's energy come from? As we explored in an earlier chapter, it comes from the fusion of hydrogen nuclei. Where did those hydrogen nuclei come from? As you'll learn in an astronomy course, ultimately, evidence strongly suggests, from the Big Bang at the beginning of time and space. From the Big Bang on up to now, and most likely to the end of this universe, that's all energy will ever be doing, spreading outward to wherever it can go, not liking one bit being all bunched up. This is such an essential concept. It turns out to be the driving force for just about everything we see. Nuclear reactions, chemical reactions, biological reactions, and all things physical have this in common. It's true, living organisms can collect and store energy temporarily, but ultimately, that energy disperses, spreading outward. You'll get good energy from a good breakfast, but guess where that energy ultimately ends up by the end of the day? This tendency of energy to spread outward has a name. We call it entropy. The idea of entropy is often confused with disorder, it's true that after energy has spread outward, there may be an aftermath that appears much more disordered, but not necessarily. Get this, a deck of unshuffled cards and a deck of cards all mixed up, they have the same amount of energy, provided they're at the same temperature. Whether they're shuffled or unshuffled is not the point. The main point is that if one deck is warmer, it'll soon release its energy, I guarantee you, to the deck that's colder. It's what energy does, and that action we call entropy. Think of it this way. Energy is like money. The more you got, the more you can do. Now, you may have a fat bank account, but what good is that if you never spend a dime? If energy is like money, entropy is like the spending of that money. So, you see the parallels? It's great to have a lot of money, but things only start to happen once you start spending that money. So entropy is not a measure of energy itself. No, it's more like a measure of the spending of that energy. And it's the spending of that energy that causes things to happen here in our physical universe. Which is to say, entropy is so important. It's been defined to be a law of nature called the second law of thermodynamics, which can be paraphrased as follows. Any process that happens by itself results in the net dispersal, the net dispersal of energy. What would you think if you saw smoke moving not out of, but into a campfire? That would be unbelievable, wouldn't it? Because you know intuitively 
that energy has a one-way direction, from concentrated to dilute. We see this so much that we associate the spreading out of energy with another profound concept we call time. If you ever saw smoke traveling into the campfire, you would be wise to conclude that time was moving backward. So now you know why time only moves forward. That's because energy only ever disperses outward. Oh, this is a subject rich for discussions. To get you started, let's explore the nature of time in the next lesson. Good chemistry to you. Mm -hmm. 